A question from Aaron came in that asks, what are the some of the main things that people do in their BIOS? Why would you need to even bother connecting to and using the BIOS that's inside of your computer? And if you've gone through the BIOS video that we've had, you see I go through it pretty quick. Look, here's a lot of things in the BIOS. And you can turn them on and off, and we're off to the next thing. But you may want to take a step back and think, why would I ever want to change these pieces? Why would I ever want to go into the BIOS and make a modification? Sometimes it is a piece that's based on security. Maybe there are USB connections on a computer, and you want to make it so that nobody can come into your office and plug in a USB key, because that's a great way to get a virus, is to plug in a USB key that's already infected. So if you turn off the USB connections on your computer, there's no way the operating system can use them. Therefore, when somebody plugs in, nothing happens. It's a very, very common thing to do. So to disable that in hardware, you want to do that in the BIOS. So go open up your BIOS, start up your computer, go into the BIOS configuration, and you can go down to the USB section and simply turn those off. And now they're gone. Now you don't have to worry about it. You've turned them off completely. And then what you normally would do is set up a manager or supervisor password to the BIOS that restricts people from changing it unless they know the password. Because somebody smart like you will see that it's turned off, and you'll start up the BIOS yourself. You'll just turn it back on unless you password protect it. I had a situation where I had an integrated card, an integrated network card on a motherboard that went bad. This happens sometimes. Your, our motherboards have so many devices on them. They've got, they've got a video card. They've got a network card. They've got the USB interfaces. It's all on the same motherboard now. And when something goes wrong, something goes bad, it may not necessarily affect the rest of the motherboard. And that's what happened with me is that the interface for the network just died. It went away. Disappeared completely. I ran diagnostics. It doesn't even see it. The diagnostics program doesn't even recognize this motherboard has an interface card on it. Well, now I have no network connection. And I don't want to replace the motherboard. It was out of warranty. It was an older system, but I still needed a network connection. But I had an interface card, a PCI interface card I could plug in. So I went into my BIOS and just disabled that interface. Because Windows could still see it. It just couldn't use it. And that's, that got to be complicated. I don't really want to see it if it doesn't work. So I went into my BIOS and just disabled it. Then it wasn't using the IRQs. It wasn't using the memory settings. It wasn't using any of the resources of my computer. And it wasn't complaining that it was disconnected or having a problem with the network interface. I just turned it off. Then I plugged in my network interface card, started up my system again. And now I've got a new network interface that's on my motherboard turned off. And on my network interface, my PCI slot turned on. And now everything worked properly again. So it becomes easy. Just make sure that you're very careful about what you're changing in your BIOS. You start messing around with memory settings, turning things off, turning things on. You're not exactly sure what might happen. So I highly recommend to grab your mobile device, uh, take a picture of the screen before you make any changes, because there's no way to back out of it. There's no some, some BIOSes do have a way to back out. Some motherboards have two BIOSes on them. So if you mess up one, you've got one to fall back. But most computers don't have that. So I just take a snapshot of it or make a note, a piece of paper, what I changed. That way, if it doesn't boot up and something doesn't work right, I know exactly how to get back to the previous configuration.